going, and you have Russia in there. Now, if you remember Russia, Russia was the Sov Soviet Union, right? And they went into a place called Afghanistan. And they went busted. They went bankrupt. They were fighting it for years. The Afghans are great soldiers, very smart, very smart. In fact, I'm waiting for Obama to give an exact date when he's going to leave. Then they'll just go away for a little while. Then they'll come. And <laughs> that's what happened in Iraq. We are leaving in 14 months. October 13th. We will be leaving. The enemy says, hey, this is great news. Now think of this, by the way, think of this. Even if you didn't mean it, OK? Because think of General Patton McGrath. Think about what they're doing. They're spinning in their grave. They can't believe this. Think of Obama said the following. We're never leaving. We're going to be there forever. Forever. And we're going to destroy them. And we're going to this. And we're going to that. Even if he didn't mean it. They would have said, oh, I've had enough. Let's get the hell out of here. These people are crazy. These people are crazy. So now we have the Syrian situation. And that's going to be a big bogged down. That's going to be bogged down. And I can see already what's going to happen with Russia. And they think it's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. And Russia doesn't want ISIS. I know they're hitting the other targets right now, too. And we're supposed to be fighting, fighting for the rebels. But nobody knows who the rebels are, right? Remember Libya and how bad Gaddafi was? And we're going to fight for the rebels. Well, then the rebels killed our ambassador in the worst way, what happened to him. And three other people, and many other people, by the way. OK? Remember that. Perhaps thanks to Hillary Clinton. Correct. 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 But do but you remember that? And then you have Iraq with Saddam Hussein. I mean, he was vicious. He was a violent guy. But you know what? There were no terrorists in Iraq. That was not. Now it's the Harvard University of Terrorism. That's where they study terrorism right now in Iraq. You had no terror. You know what he used to do to the terrorists? A one-day trial and shoot them. OK, that was. And the one-day trial usually lasted about five minutes. All right? Right? You see it. There was no terrorism then. There was no. Uh, and remember this. When the World Trade Center came down, they didn't go back to Iraq. You know that, right? The families. The families got deposited on airplanes to go home because the husbands are going to do a great deed. another place. Correct. They didn't go to Iraq. They didn't go to Iraq. So we shouldn't have been in, and then the way Obama got us out, we shouldn't have gotten out. That was the wrong way to get out. We shouldn't have been there, and we shouldn't have gotten out the way we got out. So there are a lot of, lot of stupid people in Washington, and it's one of those things. But I just want to tell you that, and I was going to read the plan, and I was also going to read the Second Amendment to you, because we have a Second Amendment plan that's great. Because I was going to read it. I was going to do a whole thing, and I was going to come up and read this Second Amendment, and we have an incredible policy. You know, they all wanted me to do policy. And I kept saying, read it, read it. I can do it. I'll start off. Should I start off, really? Okay. So I put in Donald J. Trump, et cetera, et cetera, protecting our Second Amendment rights will make America great again and strong again, right? The Second Amendment to our Constitution is clear. Now, this is in light of what's gone on with Oregon. You know, every time something happens, they blame. They don't blame men mental illness, that our mental health care is out of whack, and all of the other problems. And by the way, it was a gun-free zone. I will tell you, if you had a couple of the teachers or somebody with guns in that room, you would have been a hell of a lot better off. You would have been a hell of a lot better off. It's really sad. And we can say that with respect to a number of places where that happens. But you have a gun. How about the military event that took place three or four months ago, where you had these highly decorated soldiers in a military area where they're not allowed. And this one soldier was like one of the highest decorated. And they weren't allowed to have the guns. And this whack job walks in and starts shooting them. Why are we having, why are we having gun-free zones in a military camp? OK? So the Second Amendment to our Constitution is clear. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed upon, period. 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 The Second Amendment guarantees a fundamental right that belongs to all law-abiding Americans. Right? I wrote this. The Constitution doesn't create that right. It ensures that the government can't take it away, right? Can't. They're doing all sorts of moves to try and take it away. 
Our founding fathers knew and our Supreme Court has upheld that the Second Amendment purpose is to guarantee our right to defend ourselves and our families. We need that. In fact, I have a license to carry in New York. Can you believe that? Nobody knows that. Jeez. Somebody attacks me. Somebody attacks me. Oh, they're going to be shocked. Can you imagine? Somebody says, oh, there's Trump. He's easy pickings. What do you say? <laughs> right? Oh, boy. What was the famous movie? Remember? No, remember? Where he went around and he sort of, after his wife was hurt so badly and killed. What? Act honestly? Yeah, you're right. It's true. But you have many of them. You have many of them. Charles Bronson, right? The late, great Charles Bronson. Name of the movie? Come on. Death Wish. Remember that? Oh, uh, we're going to cut you up, sir. We're going to cut you up. Oh, oh, oh. Bink. One of the great movies. Today, you can't make that movie because it's not politically correct. Right? It's not politically correct. But could you imagine with Trump, somebody says, oh, all these big monsters aren't around. He's easy pickings. And then, hmm. <laughs> so this is about self-defense, plain and simple. It's been said that the Second Amendment is America's first freedom. That's because the right to keep and bear arms protects all of our rights, which is so true. We're the only country in the world that has a Second Amendment. Protecting that freedom is imperative, absolutely imperative. And I do a whole paper on it. I do a whole paper, and it's gotten fantastic reviews. It's enforced the laws in the books. It's fix our broken mental health system. All of these people, it's not the guns, it's the people that these sick people defend the rights of law abiding, and this is important because they're trying to take your rights away. They say, we only want a couple of bullets in the magazines. Maybe you shouldn't have magazines. Have a gun that fires one bullet. Have nothing. Defend the rights of law-abiding gun owners. And that doesn't happen, so we have to do that. They, you know, they have background checks already in place, and that was done in 1998, and people slip through, and our government's not doing a great job. You have a national right to carry, and you have the military bases. I mean, when you think about the military bases, so we laid out this policy. I'm a very, very big Second Amendment person. It's very important to me. It's very, very important. So, so you know, one other thing I want to say. Is I, I met with a lot of uh, ministers and pastors the other day, and I brought up one point that has been bothering me for a long time, and it's the word Christmas. We can't say Christmas. You ever go to a store now where you, it says Happy Holiday? And I say to the owner, where, where is the Christmas? No, no, we don't do that. We don't do that anymore. You can't use, you think of it, you can't use Christmas anymore. Okay? I will tell you one thing. If I win, you're going to be using Merry Christmas all the time. All the time. So, it's an incredible honor to be here. It's incredible to see the kind of numbers you have in this room and way outside. We have speakers set up for them, but it's, you know, obviously not the same thing, but it's, it's an honor that they showed up and they're standing out there in the rain. But I just want to tell you that we are going to do something special. There's something special that's happening. There's something special, and I see it everywhere. There is something special that's happening. And look around at the people that are next to you, and just remember, we are going to do something that's going to surprise the world. We're going to win, and we're going to turn this around. And we're not only going to make America great again, we're going to make it better than ever before. And we can do it better than ever before. And I just want to thank you, and I love you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.